What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to go over my review score predictions for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, a few very, very quick things, and then we'll get right in. Remember, this is a series that I, you know, I am going to predict what I think critics are going to give this game. It's a chance for us to talk about some of the talking points that I think we'll see for the game when it comes out. With that being said, I don't go based off review scores. I want to make that known, right? I, I'm not anti them, but I just don't make my purchasing decisions off of review scores. I get a lot of people do. I'm obviously home to a lot of different uh, trains of thought, so it's completely okay. Um, but that's the uh, that's the purpose, basically, uh, of this video. If you guys do like that, and I try to do this with all of the major games, or at least games I'm interested in when they're coming out, if you guys do like that, make sure you guys are subscribed, have the bell icon turned on, and support the other social media stuff I'm on, all in the description below. I have a Discord, Twitter, and second channel. It would be much appreciated. So let's go through this. Um, I've been doing this as of late, and, well, one, by the way, I get a lot of these right. Normally, I don't get a lot of predictions right on this channel, but when it comes to game review score predictions, I'm o I'm almost always right on the money. I give myself a four-point uh, window kind of to work with, um, and I've been doing this uh, lately where I look at the history. I try and look at, especially if games are part of a franchise, I try to look at where they've come from. So it's important to look at Origins and uh, Odyssey, I think, when we talk about Valhalla, because while a lot of people, including myself, initially Initially for this game, probably thought it was going to be a really, really big jump, you know, that next-gen Assassin's Creed game. That's not going to happen, I would assume, for a couple more years. This game is still, I would say, very much built from the ground up for current gen. We'll have the next gen kind of upgrades, kind of specs, but it's going to be, I would say, more of the same. Is that a bad thing? No, not if you like where Assassin's Creed has taken the past couple games. I know a lot of people, I think, have uh, over, I think it's becoming more popular, and by the way, I don't disagree. I don't really, you know, I don't really have that much to say, but I know that over the last little while, it's become more popular for people to say that they missed the old style, you know, the Ezio and where they took that, you know, with Unity and Syndicate. They missed that style of Assassin's Creed. I think there's actually a lot of people uh, that think, you know, either Either or. So, Assassin's Creed Origins got an 81 based off of 63 critic reviews. It also had a 7.2 based off of the user score, which you'll find as we go through these, the user scores for Assassin's Creed, I didn't know this, they're always bad. They're never good, but they're never, like, atrocious. They don't get review bombed. They didn't get, well, like, what The Last of Us Part Two got, uh, but they're never actually very good. And I, didn't actually, I did not actually know that. I assumed the Ezio games were solid, but ever since then, they have not been. Assassin's Creed Odyssey got 86 reviews, so 23 more reviews, and it got an 83. Okay, so it went up a couple points. And then the user score dropped big time to a 6.3 okay so critically went up just a little bit user wise went down uh, by a lot and I do think generally that's where a lot that's what a lot of people think I think a lot of people saw Odyssey as a step back but I did want to check because I just want to see where they uh, where people had thought Syndicate and Unity were and I was actually kind of surprised Syndicate got a 76 by the same amount of reviews and a 6.8 user score now there is an underground I feel like following for Syndicate I didn't know it was this powerful, but take that what you want. And then Assassin's Creed Unity, the, the very bad one of the group, the one that I think broke Assassin's Creed in a lot of ways, it got a 70, and it got a 5.3 uh, based off of the user score. So that one was the one that got the worst user score. But again, you look at it, 5.3, 6.8, 6.3, 7.2. I mean, we're not reaching all that, and those are the user scores, not very high. So when I look at Valhalla, I honestly feel like this one could be an easy one. This one is uh, could be one of those like safe games, like I've talked about with like a Crash or like a Miles Morales, where not in the same way, because I think this game is going to absolutely upset people, but by the looks of it, Assassin's Creed games always seem to upset people. I, for what it's worth, did enjoy you know, the you know Origins and Odyssey. I didn't think they were the greatest games of all time. I don't mind the change. I will say I do kind of miss the, the Ezio games where they were kind of at their peak. I just don't think they've ever reached that pinnacle again. With that being said, I think they've done a lot of uh, better things in other aspects of the game. Okay, some things have gotten better, some things have gotten worse. I feel like, based off of what we've seen with this game, well, look, I don't think there's any hiding it. It really looks like 
kind of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but for Vikings, okay? So if Assassin's Creed Odyssey got an 83, I really feel like, to just skip ahead to what I think the, the review is going to be, let me say I'll, I'll just do 8.2 to 8.5. That gives me a four-point range or an 82 to an 85. I think that's very, very safe. That falls in line with a lot of the other games. Um, if it got lower than that, well, then we're starting to look at some of the weaker Assassin's Creed games of all time. If it gets higher than that, I mean, look, I normally, like, I guess talk about, like, the potential of something like that happening, right? Like, kind of just give it respect and, like, well, you know, it could get high. I really feel like this game is going to level out in somewhere in that the, the low 80s. I don't think it's going to get any higher than that. I just feel like the game does a lot again these games do a lot of things right they do a lot of things that people enjoy but they also do a lot of things that people do not like and again odyssey i think in the wider spectrum was a step back for the series that a lot of people a lot of people feel that now not everybody feels that but a lot of people feel that it's also represented even in the user scores but again funny enough critically it went up it went up from 81 for origins to an 83 with odyssey so we'll have to see if maybe it continues to go up does it get like an 85 and 86 because of you know valhalla just takes all of those steps as always it's where you put your expectations if you're expecting this game to still be again what i think a lot of people thought when it was first announced which again i do not blame you i thought it too where it's like okay this is the next gen assassin's creed experience i don't you know i mean i just don't think that's the case there's really to kind of level expectations for all these games by the way there's really not a next gen like this is a standout thing besides in my mind probably demon souls or even like a godfall and that's just because they're only on next gen or like the medium when that comes out uh, in december for xbox series x and s like you know, again, like Miles Morales, I guess, but also, again, you have it on PS4. So games that are built from the ground up for PS5, this game is not, right? I mean, just very simply, this game is not uh, a, a game like that. We're not going to get the same thing with Watch Dogs, really. We're not going to get a game like that probably for a few more. If there's an Assassin's Creed game in two more years, that's when we may get a game that's a lot more largely built up for next gen. I think that is when we would see a lot of the, the changes, a lot of the bigger uh, changes happening. With that being said, there are a lot of changes to Valhalla, and I do see this game as a chance. If Ubisoft does it right, if they've done it right, they have a chance here and I guess, again, I know it's like a small sample size and you're maybe not even playing around with the best games that maybe the, the majority thinks of the series. But if you do it right, out of these three games, Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla, you could easily be making the best game. It may not be that jump, the massive jump that people maybe wanted in the beginning or maybe still want now. But I do think you're going to have a game that does that kind of picks, picks and chooses all of the right things that the past games have done and then, you know, kind of tries to eliminate as many of the negative things people have done or, you know, the past games have done. So I feel like that's kind of where it's going to stand out. In terms of talking points, well, the thing with Odyssey, right, a lot of the talking points was that it was too big, too much to do. And they've even talked about that, that they're going to kind of minimize it, kind of shrink it down, but, you know, more focus on the core things. We'll probably see that being said in reviews too. I feel like a lot of the, the main talking points of this game will be like it's a sleeker, more focused Origins and Odyssey. I think that's probably, and again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That may not be what everybody wants, but I feel like if that's what the game will shoot for, I actually, feel, and, and I do think there is value to that, by the way. If the game is shooting to be something, even if it's not the greatest thing in the world and it nails it, I do think there's a lot of value there. A good example is Ghost of Tsushima. I don't think it's the best open world game of all time. In fact, a lot of people have said it, and I'll say it too, it uses a lot of the, the quest mechanics. I mean, it steals it from every... It, none of it's really original, okay? And, and sometimes it gets boring. We can go on and on, but it sets out to be the best and really the only open world samurai game that does it complete justice. And you know what? It nails it 110%. 110%. And for what it's worth, that I think that's worth a lot. I think that's actually an, an enormous value because it's set out to do something. It may not be the greatest thing of all time, but for what it tried to do, it absolutely hit every single marker, and I do think uh, there is value there. So for Valhalla, it's kind of the same thing. If it's trying to be Assassin's Creed Origins and Assassin's Creed, uh, you know, Odyssey, but a Viking form, and you know, changes and additional things, and you know, the settlement, I feel like can be a really like you know your Viking like city and growing that 
I think that could be really, really cool. I do think there's going to be a lot of value there. That could be one of the best parts. The sieges of this game, I think that could be some of the best parts of it. I really feel like this is going to be an overall solid game, and really, sh there's really no excuse that it should be the most solid and consistent of the three, you know, of the three that we've gotten, and hopefully paves a good thing where it's like, okay, well, for the next game, for the next game on next gen, you do a lot of what maybe, you know, Valhalla did, but then you obviously really start to take some steps, really some big steps for next gen. That could be, you know, their blueprint. That could be their path forward. So, again, I'm going to say an 82 to an 85. That gives me four points. I really feel like we're going to nail it this time, just like we've nailed it for a couple of the other games. But let me know in the comments below, guys, what do you think? What are your review score predictions for this game? Do you think it's going to be good, bad? What do you think some of the talking points are going to be? Let me know. Again, as always, make sure you guys are subscribed. Have the bell icon turned on. All my other social media stuff is in the description below if you guys want to support me there. And I will see you all on the next video.